In the past, I used to use the IV generator, and I need to say that the results weren't really realistic. And I always wondered, why on some visualizations people get such incredible results? Well, now I know, and I'm going to show you a great technique. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Aka and I'm a CG artist. And on this channel, we explore techniques and tools that will help you become a better artist. Today, I will show you how to create ivy that grows on the beans you have in the scene. But before we start, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, so you are sure you won't miss any future tutorials. Okay, so let's jump to 3ds Max. Okay, so I opened the scene with an ivy model. It's a model from Glow Plants. By the way, I have some really good news. I have a discount from Glow Plant for you. With the code AVA5, you get minus 5% off for any purchases. I put the link to this specific plant below the video. However, I highly recommend to check out all their models as they're really good quality and have really good materials. On their website, you will be able to choose different formats. In this tutorial, we'll use the GrowFX file. Now, to be able to open it, you need to have the GrowFX plugin installed. So I put the link to this plugin uh, in the description below the video as well. With that being said, let's go back to 3ds Max. Let's start by copying the model. I will scale it up to match the structure scale. Then, let's position it close to the model. Once it's done, open Direction Modifier window and decrease the path length of the root. Then go to the Trunk path and update the object in the Object React modifier. Do the same in Trunk 01 path. Everything looks great. I'll move it more to the side though. Awesome. Next, I will select branches and turn on the distributors window. Here, I will increase density. Maybe not so much. Let's try 0.16. Much better. Now let's add ivy to the top part of the structure. Let's copy the GrowFX model and position it close to the top beam. Maybe here will be better, as it won't intersect with the other object. Once the object is in the right place, select the roof path and in the direction modifiers, edit the vector direction modifier. Click add another global vector. Then click create and click in the viewport. Rotate it by 90 degrees. It's working. We have to do the same with the trunk path. This time, click pick and pick the same vector. Actually, turn it off. The model looks better without it. We're not finished yet. 
we have a couple of more things to do. This sort of techniques you will learn during our Advanced X0 training. So if you found this tutorial useful and interesting, you will definitely want to check out uh, our website where you will find plenty information about it. I put the link uh, to the website in the corner and in the description below the video. Ah, I almost forget to tell you. The IV plant from Glow Plants uh, is a part of bonuses you will get with the course. Okay, let's go back to 3ds Max. Let's move it to the right in this case, so it stays within the structure. I will increase the length of the trunk 01 path. I want to have more ivy on the other beam. I will have to go back and turn on the vector direction modifier in the trunk path. I will edit its strength though. Let's scale down the graph. Maybe not so much. Now it looks great. I like it. First model is done. Let's add the rest. Now, we just have to copy this object closer to the other beams. Make sure to use the copy option, not instance. Looking good. I will copy it to other beams as well. I will hide the vertical motor for now, not just the length of this object. Let's make it shorter so the models don't overlap with each other. Play around with the values until you achieve a satisfying result. Looks good. I will unhide the vertical object. Lastly, I will make this object a bit longer so it covers the right side of the model. If you click on the new seat, you will get a new random result with the same values. Like this one more. Awesome! That's it. See you in the next lesson. So how do you like this method? Let me know in the comments. Now if you found this tutorial useful and you would like to learn more advanced techniques like this, I'd like to invite you to check out our advanced exterior training where we'll teach you more advanced techniques of creating materials, creating nature scenarios, creating different seasons, uh, setting up the camera according to the composition rules, using post-production to add atmosphere, uh, using fog and volumetrics, uh, using forest pack and rock clone, creating different lighting scenarios and editing plants with graphics and much, much more. Click here to check it out on our website. Bye-bye!